tangled in cords. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast by novice writers for novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Today, we are going to be doing a book review, and each month this year, we are going to be passing off the torch to different members of the harem to do book reviews at the end of each month. And this month, being the month of January, is my turn. And I, Nathan, being your fearless leader, will be tackling the book Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. I feel like the best way to summarize how I feel about Ash Princess is to tell you a little story. While I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do the first book review of 2020 on, I was at work one day. Uh, and I was talking to a customer about young adult books, YA books in the fantasy genre. Um, and we got onto the subject of Ash Princess. And they asked me if I had read that. And I, I should mention, I've read this book maybe three, four months ago at this point. But they asked me if I had read it. And I told them, my gut instinct said, no, I haven't read it. And then after they walked away, after I had finished the conversation, I realized, wait a second, I have read this book. Huh. Wow. I don't really know what to say for this book. So I'm going to go a little bit off script and hope that I say something coherent enough. Ash Princess was a book that left such a small and underwhelming impression on me that I had completely forgot that I'd even read it only mere months after I had finished the book. And as I was preparing to do this book review, I decided to kind of read back through parts of the book. And for those who don't know, I work at Barnes & Noble, so I read quite a bit uh, and I talk to a lot of people about books um, and I, I like to keep my my net pretty open I, I read a bunch of different genres everything from nonfiction to fiction to fantasy to sci-fi to manga to uh, personal growth so I've read quite a few young adult fantasy books that tends to be my favorite genre to go come back to is the young adult fantasy stuff, because there's a lot of very interesting books out there in the young adult fantasy books. This is not one of them. This is by no means a terrible book, but this is not an interesting read. Uh, if you enjoy stuff like, say, Throne of Glass, Red Queen, Th Throne of Fire and and Thorns and Ice and whatever the <laughs> book is called, um, then you'll probably enjoy this one, honestly. Like, it's so generic, YA. It is so YA, it's so generic, um, which isn't necessarily a dig on the book itself, but rather just, it's just a rehash of everything else we've seen before, and it's not a rehash that does anything interesting either, which is the real, the real shame in this, because I feel like, I feel like there definitely could have been opportunities to really shine, um, and, and this book has, like, say, a magic system that's based off of crystals, and I don't feel like that was ever explored enough. And maybe in the, in the sequels that, that is explored, but the, the problem is, is that the first book was so generic that it gave me no reason to continue the story. Even after the cliffhang ended, I just did not care enough. Now, if you enjoy this book, then have at it. Like, I'm not, not downing that. Like, like I said, this book is not necessarily bad. It's just has nothing important to say. To the point that it's just a face in the endless sea of other YA books. It's really interesting since there's a video that I'm working on that's coming up at some point in the future. Uh, and I've, I've been really doing a lot of research on what makes a book or a series or anything like that memorable. And one thing that I've learned while doing this research is that it's not necessarily the great things of a book that makes them interesting, but it's also the parts that aren't necessarily great that make things interesting. And by not necessarily great, I mean the faults of the book. Uh, and this book doesn't really have a lot of faults. Um, I mean, definitely there, it, it, it does have faults, but nothing that's egregious. Uh, and, you know, props to you, Lara Sebastian, for, for writing a book that doesn't necessarily have faults. But at the same time, there's nothing in it that makes it unique. Um, and so there's nothing that really made it stand out amongst the crowd. You look at something like Serpent and Dove, which was just such a solid read. Or you look at something like uh, The Cruel Prince, which was just so intriguing. Uh, and you compare it to Ash Princess, and Ash Princess just, it, it doesn't have much of a voice when you compare it to, to other books that are in the same genre. And, and that's kind of why I wanted to talk about this book. There, I don't have a lot to say about it, honestly. I really don't. Because it's just so average. 
And that, I think, is worth talking about. And here's my writing advice. Actually, first off, before I get into the writing advice, let me give you my final verdict. I would give this book maybe a two, two and a half star. Like I said, it doesn't it doesn't deserve a one star, a zero star, a, a thumb down or anything. Not, not for me anyway, but it just, eh. It didn't really do anything special for me. And reading back through it uh, in preparation for this, there wasn't a lot that I can necessarily criticize about it, but there's nothing that I can praise on it either. One thing that did bother me, however, let me just let me just put a pin in right here. Love triangles are so overused, and this one was so dumb. It was so dumb. You already knew exactly who the character was going to get with by the time you even started the book, so why even put a love triangle in there in the first place? It was just generic drama, and it didn't need it to, to exist. Uh, the other thing that honestly bothered me was just how much exposition the first, like, two chapters have. Like, they... <sighs> When you're writing a book that's trying to captivate teenagers who have short attention spans, and I can say that because I I was and am one of those people with a very short attention span, which is why I like young adult, because they usually move pretty quickly. When you have nothing, essentially nothing, but exposition in the first two chapters, you're going to lose so many readers. If you can make it through that, then you have a, a, a fairly run-of-the-mill story to, to enjoy. And, you know, I... I found enough enjoyment to at least finish the book, obviously. I don't remember what I read, but I at least finished it. Um, so, you know, there's there's at least that. But, honestly, there's so many better options to read. Don't don't waste your time unless you're, unless you're scraping for, for something to satiate your appetite for whatever next is coming out. Um, but it by no means is bad. It's by no means amazing. So if you like this kind of genre, then you will probably enjoy this. If this is something you gobble up, regardless of how good it actually is, then you'll probably love it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, like I said, it's not a bad book. But here's my writing advice. Number one, don't front load your book with exposition. Give us, give us the characters. Show us why we care about these characters first and foremost. It's the first thing you need to do. Second thing you need to do is introduce why we care about the world. Once we got those two things, we'll stick around to the end. But my, my truly solid writing advice is write something with heart and soul. You look at books, stories, movies, whatever it is, that are either amazing or they're so bad that they're amazing. And then you look at something like this, which is just kind of there in the middle. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's just there. And what dis distinguishes this from something that is absolutely trash or absolutely amazing is personality. The main character was so run-of-the-mill, and that's all good and fine, but give us something fun. Give us something exciting. Give us, or at the very least, give the character faults. And, it, and it's not that this character was faultless, but rather her mistakes never amounted to anything. And that's and that's something that's that's important when you're writing a book. But on top of that, as I've been doing research for this upcoming uh, video that I've been working on, I've realized that books live or die by the heart and soul inside of them. And this book is going to fade into into the crowd. It's going to get lost in the crowd because there's there's not a ton of heart and soul. And that's not to say that that the author didn't pour her heart and soul in this. I'm sure she did. But it's it just felt like a rehash of everything else. And it was a quick cash grab is is what it felt like to me. And so when you're writing something and this is this is my final piece of advice. If you're writing something, don't write something that you think people will read. Write something that you love. Write something that you want to pour your heart and soul into, because whether it's good or bad is irrelevant. If it has, if the thing you're writing has personality, then it is worth talking about. And this book didn't have a lot of personality. It was, it was just kind of standard. Um, I don't really know what else to say. At this point, you've seen enough YouTube to know the drill here. Follow us on all the social medias. We're on all the places. Give us a like, comment, subscribe would be amazing. Um, but other than that, you folks have a wonderful day. Nathan out.